guys, Ann here from Cherry Rock Creations. I was asked recently how I make my foaming bath whip from scratch, so I thought I'd show you all real quick. There are a few things we need before we get started. We'll need some alcohol. I use 99%, a spray bottle, gloves, wire whisk, spatula, spoon, um, a mask. It's optional, but I advise it. You don't have to have a fancy mask. Um, any mask will do stick blender, digital thermometer, digital scale, mixing bowls, an empty container to store your bath whip in when you're done, and a double boiler. And please excuse me, I do have a little bit of a cold. Uh, apologies. All right. Now we always want to start with a disinfected surface and disinfected tools. So we'll take our alcohol and we will just spray everything down really well. Um, I use 99% alcohol. It evaporates super quick, but it gets the job done. So once you have everything all good and sterilized and ready to go, it is time to measure everything. So you're gonna get out your scale. Oh, by the way, my scale is clean. <laughs> it's just covered in wax. I had a mini catastrophe making wax melts, and well, it is what it is. So <laughs> I just want to let you know. <laughs> now we're going to make a very small batch today, about 300 grams. I use grams because it's more accurate, but you use whatever you're comfortable with. So we're going to weigh out our distilled water. Don't use tap water or spring water, please. You want to use distilled. Our sodium coical isothenate, or SCI. And I am such a, oh my gosh, I make such a mess. Look at that. <laughs> I get it everywhere. But this stuff is lighter than air. And if you breathe it in, it will choke you. It'll make you cough. Um, so that's why you want to use a mask is for your SCI right there. And we're going to measure out our stearic acid. There's the stearic acid. And then after that, we want the cocomitopropyl betaine. And by the way, I'm going to have all this linked in the description below. And then you're going to want some glycerin. And glycerin is really thick, um, and be careful when you're measuring that because it can get away from you before you know it. So we're going to measure out our glycerin, and the preservative that I use is Germal Plus. You use, you know, whatever you want, but that's what I'm familiar with, and look at that. It wouldn't focus. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, so we're going to mix everything together. And just a quick heads up, go ahead and subscribe if you'd like more videos like this. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. So we're just going to combine everything in the bowl. And there's the glycerin. Um, go ahead and take your spatula and scrape all that out. You want to get it all in there. And we're going to add our SCI. Oh, and our stearic acid first. And then we're going to add our SCI. We're going to go ahead and start blending it all together with our whisk. We want to get it all mixed up really good. Now, don't forget your mask for this part. I did and almost choked to death. <laughs> so I had to stop what I was doing and go get my mask and come back and finish. And it, it just keep just keep whisking it. It will eventually all mix together. I had to stop and get my mask here. Just have a little bit of patience with it. Keep mixing it, and it will all mix together. You want it all really good and and combined before you start melting it. You're just going to mix it up together. I love making this. Um, I've ordered the bases before the 
bath whip bases before and there's nothing really wrong with them it's just I find that I have a, a better time making my uh, products out of this I haven't really seen that much of a price difference oh looky there see that is the consistency we want we want it all mixed together see and then we're going to add that to the double boiler Probably on about medium low. And at this point, I realized my battery was dying. <laughs> so uh, I started melting it and my battery died. I did try to record some with my phone right here. Um, but I didn't have any way to hold my phone. So I was trying to hold the phone and stir that, and then the bowl started spinning, and it was at that point that I felt like one of the Three Stooges trying to do that and thought, well, I'm just going to stop before I drop my phone in this. But you get the idea. Now, a batch this size probably would only take about 20 minutes or so. At this point, when my battery was charged again, it was already fully melted. And I decided to go ahead and remelt it because I wanted to show you the consistency that you're looking for. And it's just going to be really smooth, really creamy. It'll be kind of opaque. And you're just going to keep working with it. Just keep stirring it. But yeah, I didn't find um, a big price difference in making my own versus buying it pre-made. But there are some benefits, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. See, isn't that looking nice? And I wanted to shoot the temperature here just so you could kind of gauge where you are. And you are supposed to stick blend this, but I didn't. Now you can dab your finger down in there and rub it between your finger and your thumb. If it feels gritty, it's not done. But if it feels smooth and creamy, you're done. At this point, you're supposed to stick blend it. But where mine had been on the double boiler for so long because that stupid battery, I ended up not having to stick blend mine. See, it's, it's all incorporated. It's all good and creamy. And I'm telling you, this is some really nice bath whip. All right, it's almost time to add the preservative, but it's still a little too warm. The Germal Plus you want to add at under 122 degrees. Um, whatever preservative you're using, just check and make sure what temperature you need to add that. All right, so we're good to go. We can add our preservative here. We're going to go ahead and just weigh that in. And then we'll mix it up really good. If you add your preservative in with the temperature too high, it'll just kind of burn it off of there, and it, it, it won't do any good. It won't actually preserve anything. But look at that. Look at how nice and thick that is. And it makes the most wonderful suds. I mean, it's it's really nice. Oh, you guys didn't see that big blob fall off there, did you? <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm so messy. It's not even funny. So you can let this set overnight is usually what I do. Um, you just go ahead and scoop it into your container. And then you can let it set overnight. Um, and it will get really, really thick, almost the consistency of lard. And you'll just spoon out however much you need. You're going to break it up with your um, mixer. 
and you can add in your whatever oils you want to, your fragrances, your your colorant, whatever you're you know wanting to use, your sugar. I did make my um, blackberry bubblegum whipped sugar scrub out of this. It's going to be its own video, but uh, I went ahead and added the piping part just so you could see what what the final product is. Um, it's super nice. And it really does hold your carrier oils, your fragrance oils, all the good stuff. It holds it really well. It holds its shape. Look at that. So smooth and creamy. See how nice that is? I mean, that's just, that's the perfect base, if you ask me. Just beautiful. And it works so nice. And then I've got a little demonstration with my um, with my bowl of water, so you can see how it suds up. We'll show that here in just a minute. But I had mentioned that I didn't see much difference in price as far as making my own and buying a pre-bought or a pre-made base. But there was a couple of benefits. Um, first benefit is I can control what I put in mine and how much. Um, the final product comes out so much thicker and creamier than anything that I have bought that was already made. The second benefit was really why I got into making my own to begin with. Um, the place where I was buying mine, it was taking two, three, sometimes four weeks to get an order from them. And it was driving me crazy. So I thought, well, even if there's not that much of a difference in price just the fact that when I need my foaming bath whip base I can have it within 24 hours I can go ahead and get all the ingredients and make however much I need and know that the next day I'm good to go I don't have to place an order and hope and pray that I get it in two or three weeks that was driving me crazy um, so to me that's something you can't put a price on now if I bought my stuff in extreme bulk quantities. I'm sure it would be cheaper, but I haven't got to that point yet. Um, but I just, I really do like doing my own. It's, uh, it's a little more satisfying. <laughs> okay, well, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you have any questions, please let me know. And thank you so much for watching. Have a good one.